morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I want to suggest you get a good, strong cup of coffee and join me over in the book of Jonah in the Old Testament. We're going to be the next several days looking over this Old Testament book in a way that you perhaps have never seen before. So get ready for the run, get ready for the ride. It's going to be fantastic. But before we get started, I just want to shout out to Charles. Charles, who works in the evenings at the McDonald's in Chesney, South Carolina. I was just coming in from work late, late last night, picking up something for Sue as I was coming in because she loves the McDonald's vanilla milkshake, among other things. And as I was there, someone uh, called out to me from behind the counter and said, hey, Dr. Bailey, and it was Charles. Good to meet you, my friend, and find out that you've been watching Wake Up in the Word for some time. You know, you never know who you're going to run into when you just drop by Mickey D's. But in the meantime, we're going to be starting something brand new today for Charles and all the rest of you that watch every day faithfully. We're going to start the book of Jonah. And for some of you who, they're, who are rather sporadic, you just catch it every once in a while. I want to encourage you to get serious about, look, like, subscribe, watch this every day between now and next week, especially because I'm doing the book of Jonah because of an event that's taking place that the whole world is recognizing. And if I have to explain that to you, then, you know, you've probably had your head buried in the sand somewhere. It's going to be a total eclipse over the United States of America next Monday. That total solar eclipse is going to be covering our country in a strange way. I preached a message entitled Eclipses in the Bible back in 2017 when the first eclipse crossed the United States from Salem, Oregon, all the way across South Carolina. The path of totality went over us in Winsboro, and we were able to gather with some friends and relatives in our yard with the protective glasses and watch it. And of course, I talked about the significance of those kind of events and how God uses those. Well, as a part of that message back in 2017, I pointed out that when Jonah preached at Nineveh, because in these days, we now know what happened in the past. Daniel talked about the explosion of knowledge that would happen in the end times. We can literally take those wonderful programs that uh, that I've used, maybe you've used before as well, and you can roll the sky back to any time, any date, from any place on this planet and see what was going on in the sky. And yes, the folks in Nineveh had received not just the preaching of Jonah, but the signal from the heavens of a total solar eclipse that confirmed his preaching to them and allowed the end of the book of Jonah, the repentance of that great city, to take place. So all of that's coming into focus again this year because this eclipse is going to be crossing the United States beginning in the state of Texas. Matter of fact, right around Eagle Pass. I, I won't get into that one right now. But uh, it crosses over some interesting places, including a little community with just about 60 people in it in Texas called Jonah. Now, I don't know why you would name your community Jonah, but you know what? I know a lot of people named Jonah. And because Jonah was a great prophet, and because his preaching resulted in the repentance of an entire culture at the time, apparently some folks think it's good to name their sons Jonah at times. So with that thought in mind, let's think, even before we read this first little paragraph, I'm just going to read three verses this morning and get us started. Who is this guy that the book is written about? And by the way, the book is really about God. It starts and ends with God. But it talks about how God uses this prophet named Jonah. Well, Jonah was an 8th century B.C. prophet who ministered during the time of King Jeroboam II. We read about him a little bit over in the book of 2 Kings. He actually predicted that the king would uh, restore Israel's northern border. So Jonah was an active prophet, preacher, busy in his day doing other things until God calls him to do something very special. What do we understand about that? Well, it says in Jonah chapter 1, verse 1, that the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, get up, 
Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because their evil has come up before me. Well, Jonah got up not to go to Nineveh, of course. Verse 2 says uh, he was supposed to go where? Preach to Nineveh, in Nineveh. Verse 3 says Jonah got up to flee. Where? To Tarshish from the Lord's presence. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, and he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. Now, I won't deal with Tarshish right now. There's some interesting implications there as well. But Jonah begins this wonderful excursion, not by going to Nineveh as God commanded, but by running from the presence of the Lord. Now, that brings me to something else that's quite interesting about the eclipse that will take place next Monday. It also passes over Ohio, and in southern Ohio, it'll be going over a town named Wilmington, a place where there's a very strong Quaker community to this day. But there are also some other folks, including some Baptists, and you will find there the church called, are you ready for this, Jonah's Run Baptist Church. That's right. Jonah's Run Baptist Church. Now, I know some of you in the equestrian communities know that the word run is often attached to a place where you have horses. I don't think that's what the church was named for. Now, for some of you who may have a little more history about how the church was first named, please let me know. But in the meantime, think about this. In this very small, this rural farming area of southern Ohio, you're going to find this church with a historical marker in front of it, by the way. So this eclipse is not only going over Jonah, Texas, it's going over the Jonah's Run Baptist Church that was created by a group of folks that moved into that area that wanted to find a place where everyone could worship. Now, the Quakers from Pennsylvania had established uh, quite a farming community there, and a particular Quaker had purchased land there in 1812. That, that, that's significant. We'll get to 1812 before this study is over as well. He sold it for the location of Jonah's Run Baptist Church in 1839. There were groups of folks that were both Quakers, Episcopalians, and all kinds of folks there. But Jonah's Run Baptist Church was established as a place where all could come and worship. It was designed, and you can visit that historical building that's still there today, as a church where the men would enter on one side, the women on another side, and there would be a dividing petition between the two because according to Quaker tradition back then, uh, they wouldn't even sit together during worship. Interestingly enough, it's a vibrant church to this day. You can uh, find their Facebook page. You can check out what they're doing. Uh, they even have YouTube videos up. So yes, the Jonah's Run Baptist Church is still in existence to this day and apparently named after what we just read, the fact that Jonah got up to run from the presence of the Lord. Even though he was trying to get away from God, he didn't understand something. Apparently, he thought God was just kind of focused on the Middle East. Maybe if I get away from Israel, he won't pay attention to me anymore. But Jonah had a problem, and his problem was he didn't want to preach to those Ninevites. God, just go ahead and destroy them. I don't want them to repent. <laughs> I'm not going to go preach to them. Here was a man called by God, already used by God as his prophet, now refusing to serve the Lord as God had commanded. Will Jonah get away with this? We know he won't. God's going to chase him down, and it doesn't matter how far he tries to go. The Lord will manage to get a hold of Jonah, won't he? Well, in particular, I think the history of this church is special because from that tiny little church and this tiny little farming community have come some very important people, including Ann Kosum, who was a missionary to China back in the 1920s, and Howard McCune, who eventually became president of the Ohio Baptist Convention, all from the tiny little church known as Jonah's Run. Well, Jonah's run has some great implications for us, and we're going to look at it this week as we get ready for this sign in the heavens that God is sending us next Monday. 
and I'm going to give you all the details and all the things you need to know before it happens. In the meantime, God bless you. You have a great day in the Lord, and every day, let's wake up in his word.